What is there in the muscle fiber? The muscle fiber is covered by a membrane called a sarcolemma. And what is there inside the sarcolemma? What is there in particular inside the muscle fiber? It is a sarcoplasm. So actin filaments are called thin filaments. Myosin filaments are also called as a thick filament. Skeletal muscles, the name itself says or we can understand that these are the muscles that are located with the skeletal components of the body. Hello everyone, a warm welcome to another session on chapter 20 that is locomotion and movement. I am Dr. Divya, biology faculty with Yashramti University College Mysore Temple of Excellence. So in the previous session of this chapter, we had discussed about the movement and locomotion. That is what is the difference between movement and locomotion and what are the different types of locomotory organs that are present. And we also studied about the different types of locomotion that is amoeboid or different types of movement in particular that is amoeboid movement and ciliary movement and muscular movement. In today's session, we shall discuss about the different types of muscles that actually help in the movement and locomotion in a body. So to begin with, let us study about the muscle. So muscle is a specialized tissue that is present in the mesodermal region that is just below the skin and between the skin and the skeletal that is the bone structure of the human or the skeletal frame of the human, the muscle is present which is a specialized tissue of the mesodermal origin. And about 40 to 45 percent of our body weight of an adult human being is nothing but because of muscle. So, whatever weight we are in that 40 to 45 percent of weight is because of the muscles that are present in our body. And uh, these muscles they have very important properties such as excitability, contractility, extensibility and elasticity. So they get excited. So when muscles get excited, they contract and for that contraction, elasticity is very important. So therefore, and their extension, the rate at which they can extend, extensibility, all that properties favors muscles and hence muscles are one of the important structures or components that are very very important for the movement as well as locomotion and muscles based on different criteria they have been classified into different forms so what are those criteria so based on where they are located based on how they appear and based on the nature of regulation of their activities so based on that so based on different criteria such as where exactly the muscle is located so, if it is located in the heart, it is a cardiac muscle. Skeletal means it is a skeletal muscle. So, smooth muscles are or visceral muscles. So, based on their location, based on how they appear. Say, for example, I said smooth muscle. So, smooth muscle, I cannot understand the location, right? But why have they given the name for that? It is because the muscles do not have any striations and they are completely smooth. So, that is why they are based on the appearance. They have called it as the smooth muscles. And based on their uh, activity also, the naming of the muscles has been done. So, since we know a little bit about muscle now, we shall look into the different types of muscles based on their location. So, based on the location, the muscles are identified into three types. One is the skeletal muscles. As the name itself suggests, skeletal muscles means they are attached to the skeleton. Next, we have the visceral muscles or the smooth muscles and the cardiac muscles, those present in the heart. So, let's study each of these one by one because it is very important for us to understand because it is not just the skeletal muscles that participate in the movement and locomotion in the body. Apart from locomotion, our cardiac muscles also exhibit movement, right? When the heart beats, the contraction of the heart and the relaxation of the heart occurs. Therefore, stretching and relaxing of the muscles should occur. So, therefore, that is also a kind of movement. So, uh, so that is why they have divided into based on their location, they are divided it into skeletal, visceral and cardiac muscles. So let us study about each of these one by one in detail. So first talking about the skeletal muscles. So skeletal muscles, the name itself says or we can understand that these are the muscles that are located 
with the skeletal components of the body. So, they are usually attached to the bones of the body and they have a striped appearance. Now, you might have understood why skeletal muscles are not put under smooth muscles. Why smooth muscles have been put under a separate group? Why? Because smooth muscles do not have any stripes or striations. Whereas skeletal muscles, if you can see, they'll have a light colored and the dark colored band. All that in detail you will study in the coming sessions of this chapter. So that is why that dark and light colored band is actually because of the presence of proteins. All that you will study later. So, that is why they give a striped like appearance. So, that is why the skeletal muscles, they have a striped appearance when you look at it under the microscope and hence they are called as the striated muscles. So, what is one of the example for a striated muscle? Skeletal muscle is one such example because they have a light and a dark band giving them the illusion of having stripes. So, that is why they are called as striated muscles. And as the activities are under voluntary control, that is true, right? When I want, I can move my hand or when you want, when you can walk, you can run, you can move your hands, you can move your fingers. Otherwise, if you don't want, you can just sit idle, not doing anything, not moving your fingers, not moving from one place to another, not giving work to your skeletal muscles, right? So everything, the movement of the skeletal muscle is completely under our control. So that is why they are under voluntary control of the nervous system and therefore they are known as voluntary muscles. So give an example for voluntary muscles, it is the skeletal muscle. So two important properties of skeletal muscle is they are striated and they are voluntary in nature. And they are primarily involved in some locomotory actions and also changes of body posture. That is right, right? I can fold my hand, I can stretch my hand, my body posture is changing. So, for that also they help because of why do the muscles, skeletal muscles help because of that? Because they have property of contractility, elasticity, expendable prop nature and all that, right? So, that is why their main primary function is to help in locomotion and not just that, they also help in changing a body posture. So, this is about the skeletal muscles. So, we shall study in detail how these skeletal muscles are organized what they are made up of, what are the different components and all that. So, each of these skeletal muscles, they are organized in a body and it is made up of many number of muscle bundles or fascicles and these muscle bundles or fascicles, they are held together by collagenous tissue. So, what are these skeletal muscles? It is not that skeletal muscle is just like one sheet. It is a group of muscles which come together to form a set of muscles. So here, when I say group of muscles, we need to use certain terms for that. So how are the skeletal muscles organized in a body? So the skeletal muscles, when you look at it under the microscope, we can find they are made up of many muscle bundles, bundles or groups of muscles, which are called as fascicles. So if you can see here, they are made up of groups of bundles. So, these bundles if you can see here, right? So, this is one bundle. How many fascicles are there? They are made up of groups of muscle bundles which are called as fascicles. And these fascicles, they need to be held together. How are they held together? Like how we stick one sheet of paper on top of the other, on top of the other, on top of the other. How do we stick it? We stick it by using fevicol or some glue, right? Just like that here also, the muscle fibers are stuck or the muscle bundles or fascicles are they come together. So, if they have to be held together, they have to stick to each other. And how are they stuck to each other? How are they held together? They are held together by a substance which is called as collagen. So, it is the common collagenous connective tissue layer which is called as the fascia. So, they are held together by collagenous connective tissue. What is connective tissue? Any tissue that holds two other tissues or parts or whatever you call it as the connective tissue. So here connective tissue say for example are ligaments, tendons all those are the connective tissue because they connect to bones. Ligaments connect to bones so that is why. So just like that here 
each muscle bundle is connected by a or it is attached by a common collagenous connective tissue layer which is called as the fascia. So they are held together. So each of these in between these they will have fascia. So what is this fascia? Fascia is nothing but it is collagen connective tissue layer. Now all these fascicles or bundles, so here in this picture we have shown one bundle, the second bundle, third bundle, fourth bundle. So all these fascicles are connected to one another by collagenous connective tissue and these together they form the skeletal muscle. So that is how the skeletal muscles are arranged and each muscle bundle contains a number of muscle fibers. Now if you can see here you have many number of, so this together is called as the fascicle. What is there inside the fascicle? It is made up of a number of muscle fibers. So all these small, small circles that you can see here, no, they are nothing but the muscle fibers or the muscle cells. So a group of muscle fibers come together to form separate groups of fascicles or muscle bundles. Each of these muscle bundles are held together by collagenous connective tissue called as the fascia. So that is how the muscle fiber looks like. And each muscle fiber is covered by a plasma membrane and that plasma membrane is called as the sarcolemma and inside the sarcolemma is present the sarcoplasm. Like how we have a plant cell. Plant cell is covered by a plasma membrane. What is there inside the plasma membrane? Cytoplasm, right? Just like that here also, the muscle fiber. Each of these muscle fibers that you see, you know, each of these muscle fibers, they are covered by a membrane and that membrane, lemma means membrane and they are called as the sarcolemma. And within these uh, muscle fibers or within these sarcolemma, are present the sarcoplasm. So this is about the structure of the skeletal muscle. We were talking about the muscle fibers, right? So a muscle fiber groups together to form a muscle bundle. And what is there in the muscle fiber? The muscle fiber is covered by a membrane called a sarcolemma. And what is there inside the sarcolemma? What is there in particular inside the muscle fiber? It is a sarcoplasm. So, so much we understood. Now the muscle fiber is a synctium or it is a group of sarcoplasm and it contains many nuclei. And inside the sarcoplasm, what are there? there are lots of nuclei that is present and apart from that it also contains endoplasmic reticulum that is called as the sarcoplasmic reticulum of the muscle fibers and this endoplasmic reticulum is a storehouse of calcium that is it contains a lot of calcium ions. And the characteristic features of the muscle fiber is that they have a large number of parallelly arranged filaments in the sarcoplasm which is called as the myofilaments or the myofibril. So this is about the muscle fiber. So what is the muscle fiber made up of? What are the muscles, skeletal muscles made up of? First, there is presence of muscle fibers. What are the muscle fibers called? Muscle fibers are the presence of muscle fibers. These muscle fibers, numerous muscle fibers, they form a group called as muscle bundle. What is this muscle bundle called? It is called fascicle. And how are these muscle bundles held together? The muscle bundles are held together by a collagenous matrix that we had studied or collagenous connective tissue layer which is called as the fascia. It is called fascia. Okay, so much we know. Now we'll talk about the muscle fibers. What is there in the muscle fiber? The muscle fiber is covered by a sarcolemma. What is there inside the sarcolemma? It contains sarcoplasm. What is there in the sarcoplasm? It contains many number of nuclei. It contains endoplasmic reticulum which is called as sarcoplasmic reticulum. And this sarcoplasmic reticulum contains a lot of calcium ions and hence it is called as the storehouse of calcium ions. And apart from that, these muscle fibers that are there, all these muscle fibers are parallelly arranged. Can you see here? They are arranged parallel. One 
above the other in a parallel form. So the muscle fibers are parallelly arranged and they are in the form of filaments in the sarcoplasm and they are called as the myofilaments or the myofibrils. So just like how an optic cable looks low, just like that the skeletal muscles are also arranged. So this is about the skeletal muscle. So moving further, now we came to know that they are, each muscle fiber is made up of myofibrils or very thin fiber like arrangements, right? So we'll study about the myofibrils, what are they? So each myofibril has an alternate dark and light band. I told you why skeletal, earlier itself I told you why skeletal muscles are striped or they are striated because they have the dark and the light band. So what is the dark and the light band? They are nothing but the myofibril or the muscle fiber. So these myofibril, they are arranged in parallel manner and they appear to be dark in color, dark pink in color, light pink in color, dark pink, light pink. So that will result in the form of a stripes, right? That is why it is called as a striated muscle. And a detailed study of the muscle fiber has shown us that the striated appearance is because of the distribution pattern of two important proteins, which is called as actin and myosin. Now, what is there? The dark muscle fiber is there, light colored muscle fiber. Dark colored muscle fiber, light colored muscle fiber. Why is that dark and light color? It is because of the distribution of two important proteins, which is called as the actin and the myosin. Now, which protein provides the light color? Which protein provides the dark color? We shall see. So, the light band contains actin and it is called as the I band or it is called isotropic band. And the dark band is called as the A or anisotropic band and it contains myosin. So light band, it is made up of actin. Light band means which type of protein is present in the myofibril? It is actin. If it is dark in color, which type of protein is present in the myofibril? It is myosin. And light band is called as isotropic band or I band and it contains actin protein dark band is called as A band or anisotropic band and it contains myosin protein. Now we understood why the light and dark shades are there. Wherever in the muscle fiber actin is there, it will give a light shade. Wherever in the muscle fiber myosin is there, it gives a dark shade. So that is why they are arranged in bands. Actin, myosin, actin, myosin, actin, myosin. So therefore giving a light, dark, light, dark banded appearance. That is why they appear to be striped. And both the proteins are arranged in a rod like structure and they are also arranged parallel to each other, one above the other and also to the longitudinal axis of the myo. Fibril. So looking here, if you can see, this is the skeletal muscle. So the whole thing is the skeletal muscle. What is there in the skeletal muscle as we had seen? They are nothing but made up of muscle bundles or fascicles, right? And they are each of these skeletal muscle, if you can see, they are connected to one another by a collagenous connective tissue layer and all that we had studied. And now what is there in the muscle fibers or in the muscle bundles? They have numerous muscle fibers which are arranged parallel. And these muscle fibers give the or myofibrils give the dark and the light band. So here you can see dark and light band. So wherever there is dark band, what is the protein present? It is myosin. Wherever there is this light band, the protein that is present is actin. And myosin means it is called as an isotropic band or it is also called as A band. If actin is present, that muscle fiber or myofibril is called as isotropic band all this is very important in your coming session because to study the sliding movement of the muscles the contraction relaxation everything we need to understand this very clearly so it is called as isotropic band and it is light in color so and or it is also called as the I band so this is about the muscles and how are they arranged they are arranged closely parallel to each other so this is about the muscle so now we understood about the skeletal muscle why exactly the skeletal muscle is called as striated muscles and those striations 
because of the light and dark bland band what are the proteins that are involved in that how are these proteins arranged and all that and also i told you they contain inside the myofibril or muscle fiber what is there sarcoplasm right what is there in the sarcoplasm a lot of nucleus is being present and not just nucleus what else is there sarcoplasmic reticulum which is a storehouse of calcium ions so all that we have studied so moving further we shall study about the because we know about the dark band and the light band now or the anisotropic band and the isotropic band we shall study in detail about the muscle fiber further so actin not studying about these filaments in detail so actin filament so actin filament means they are called as isotropic band they are light in color and they are made up of the protein actin so actin filaments are thinner when compared to the myosin filaments what are myosin filaments they are dark in color they are made up of myosin and they are called as anisotropic band or a band so when you compare actin filament with that of myosin filament or when you compare light band with that of dark band the light band or actin filament is usually thinner and the dark band or myosin filament is thicker and hence they are commonly called as the thin and the thick filaments so actin filaments are called thin filaments myosin filaments are also called as a thick filaments and in the center of each of these i band so when i say in the center of each of these i band means in the center of each of these actin filament there is an elastic fiber that is present which is called as z line so the actin filaments each of the actin filaments are divided by a elastic filament which is called as the z line so if you can see here we have the actin filament so what is this i band it is nothing but isotropic band and what is it also called as it is also called as the actin filament and what is it otherwise also called as it is called as thin filament so now here the thin filament are firmly attached to the z line so what is this z line so z line is nothing but in the center of each i band is an elastic fiber because the muscles are hard stretchable in nature right so they should have elasticity so they have a elastic fiber which is called as the z line so if you can see here this is the light band right so this is the light band this is the actin filament so these actin filaments in between the actin filaments there is presence of z line and that z line actually provides the elasticity to the actin filaments of the muscle and the thick filaments in the a band so the thick filaments in the a band are also held together in the middle of this band by a thin fibrous membrane called as the m line so here we have the dark band i'll show the dark band here so we have the light band then here we mark this so we have the dark band so what is dark band also called as dark band is also called as anisotropic band anisotropic band and what is one more name for that it is also called as a band and what is it it is nothing but myosin filament so between each of these myosin filament there is a very thin elastic muscle fibers present which is called as the m line so here also there is presence of m line so that is about the dark band so when i'm moving my muscles the entire muscle stretches right it is not just that the elasticity is provided to the actin filament and the myosin filament no all the muscle fibers need to stretch so that is why each actin filaments in between each actin filament is present a elastic fiber called as z line and in between each myosin filament is present a elastic fiber which is called as the m line so now we have understood about that so therefore the a and the i bands are arranged alternately throughout the length of the myofibril so you can see they are arranged in alternate arrangements what alternate arrangement 
we have the dark band, light band, the dark band, light band and so on it continues like that and that is the one that actually provides the striations or the striped appearance to the skeletal muscle. And the portion of the myofibril that is present between two successive Z lines. Now where is the Z line present? Z line is present between actin filaments. They are the elastic muscle fibers that are present between the actin filaments, right? So the portion of the myofibril between or the portion of the muscle fiber between two successive Z line is considered as the functional unit of contraction and is called a sarcomere. So where exactly does the contraction occur? So the contraction of the muscle exactly occurs in the portion of the myofibril between two successive Z lines. It has to occur between two successive Z lines. Why? Because Z lines are the ones which are called as the elastic fibers and they are the ones that actually provides the contracting or the stretching property to the muscle. So that is why they are present there and they are called as the sarco. Mears. And when the muscles are in a resting state, so when they are in a contracting state, it means that the Z line, so where is the Z line present? Between the I bands, right? So when the Z line contracts here, it means the sarcomeres are contracting. Now, when the muscle is in a resting stage, the edges of the thin filaments on either side of the thick filaments, they partially overlap. So what is the thick filament? Thick filament is the myosin, thin filament is the actin. Now, when resting is there, they are overlapping. When contracting is there, they are expanding like this. Now, you might have understood. This is called as a sliding mechanism. So, the edges of the thin filament on either side of the thick filament. So, on either side of the thick filament means, so we have, say for example, this is the muscle fiber. So, here, this is a thick filament. thick filament. What is a thick filament? It is myosin band, right? Now on either side, if this is thick, on either side what will be there? Light band will be there, right? That is nothing but the thin filament. Both side also we have the thin filament. So here in a resting stage, when the muscles are contracting, what happens? When the muscles are contracting, two successive Z lines. Where are the Z lines present? They are present in between the thin filaments that we know and that is the one that actually provides the elasticity. So in the Z line actually the contraction will occur and therefore it is called as a sarcomeres. Now when the muscles are relaxing what will happen? So when the muscles are relaxing or when they are in the resting stage the edges of the thin filament so these edges of the thin filaments that are there where exactly those edges which are near to the thick filament they overlap they overlap on one another like this. So when they overlap, say for example, here in between where there is a space, I'm showing a space, right? Consider two of my palms like this as the thin filament. Now in between there is a gap that is the thick filament. So it will be like this. It will be in a stretched state when contraction is occurring. Now when relaxation is occurring, the muscles have to come back to their position. That time what happens? Now it will slowly relax and the two thin filaments that are there they will overlap on one another. So that is what actually happens here and the central part of the thick filament which is not overlapped by thin filament is called as the H zone. Now they overlap one another and there is one central part that is left. So if you can see here right how overlapping is occurring this is called as the H zone. So if you can see here we have the anisotropic band which is the thick filament. Now we have the thin filament which are overlapping one another and then you have a center there is no overlapping occurring which is called as the head zone. So here itself you can see this is nothing but the head zone. Here both the both of them are overlapping. Can you see here both the actin filaments or thin filaments are overlapping but in the center the overlapping will not occur. So that region is called as the head zone. So now this stage is considered as the muscle is in a resting stage. So if they are contracting what happens? Everywhere here also gap will increase. 
when they're contracting, when they're relaxing, they'll try to overlap on one another, only leaving a dark band in the middle, which is not overlapping, or the thick filament in the middle, which is not overlapping, which is called as the H zone. So this is about the contraction and relaxation of the muscle. So that is when I'm stretching my hand, I'm folding my hand, the overlapping and the resting, or the contraction and the relaxation of the resting stage of the muscle occurs. So next, moving further, we'll talk about the visceral muscle. So visceral muscles are also called as smooth muscles and they are located in the inner walls of the hollow visceral organs of the body like the elementary canal, the reproductive tract and all that. So our digestive canal, that is the esophagus, whatever tube-like structures are there. So esophagus, then our uh, reproductive structure, that is the lie in the fallopian tube, all there, these smooth muscles or the visceral muscles are present in the walls of these visceral organs. And these muscles, they are called smooth muscles because they do not have any striations. So that is why they are smooth in appearance and hence they are called as the smooth muscles or we can also call it as the non-striated muscles. And their activity is not voluntary in nature. It is not, unlike skeletal muscles, the activity of the smooth muscle is not under a control. So, give an example for an involuntary muscle, it is smooth muscle. And give an example for non-striated muscle, it is again smooth muscle or visceral muscle. You can write it as visceral muscle or if you forget the name, you can also use the term smooth muscle. Both are one and the same. And they help in transportation of food through the digestive tract and also gametes through the genital tract. So that is the function. So that I have explained already while explaining about ciliated, uh, that is uh, ciliary movement. If you remember in the first session we had studied ciliary movement in humans, right? There I had explained to you about this. So if you can see here, we have the smooth vessels. If you can see this diagram, you can find that there is no striations, no stripes. Unlike how skeletal muscle, there was the dark and the light bands. Very clearly we could make out here, there is no dark and the light band as such. So that is why it is called as a smooth muscle. So next moving further, we'll talk about the cardiac muscles. So cardiac muscles are the muscles of the heart and many cardiac muscle cells, they are arranged in such a way that they look like a branching pattern to form a cardiac muscle. So if you can see here, cardiac muscles, the muscle cells of cardiac muscles are arranged in such a way that they appear to be branched. It's not that branching is there, it is only that the muscle cells of the cardiac, of the heart are arranged in such a way that they look like as if they have branched. And based on the appearance, cardiac muscles are striated. Because they appear branched like this, they look striated. And cardiac muscles are also involuntary in nature. Can we control the beating of the heart? No, it happens on its own, right? So therefore, it is not under a control. It is involuntary in nature because the nervous system does not control the activities directly. So this is about the cardiac muscles. And cardiac muscles also stretch and Relax. We have studied about that in the human circulatory system, that particular chapter. You can have a look into that particular video. So this was about the different muscles that help in movement in the body. So I hope you understood the session well, wherein we studied about the skeletal muscles in detail and uh, the smooth muscles or the visceral muscles and the cardiac muscles. So this was about the session and in the coming session we shall study about the structure of the contractile proteins. So now we came to know how the skeletal muscle contract and how relaxation occurs. So for contraction also there are certain proteins that help. So we shall study about those contractile proteins and also we shall study about the mechanism of action of the muscle. How exactly the sliding movement occurs or so the contraction and relaxation of the muscle occurs, we shall study in the coming session. So we shall meet again in the coming session. Thank you.